Hey guys, OJ Albine here, bringing you guys our PMU Season 9 Week 6 battle against Diet Tight or Jason and his new Britain Rockcroft. Jason's a very, very good friend of mine, one of my best friends in the community. Uh, I really do appreciate him a ton. Uh, I'll link his Twitch down in the description below. I know he's not really streaming a bunch right now, but you know, in case he does, just go drop him a follow, all that good stuff. Um, I love Jay, he's a great player. Uh, we've played many times before. It has, it's been a minute. I think the last time we played was an Evo, and then before that it was actually IBA. So we haven't played a bunch over these last couple months. Um, so I'm excited to be able to go up against him again. We always have really, really good games if one of us doesn't get really lucky. <laughs> I feel like that happens a lot. The first time I played Jay, actually, it was in Academy Season 2, and it was probably one of the luckiest I've gotten in a Pokemon battle. And then he hacked me like three times in a row after that, and then I hacked him, and then we had like one or two clean games ever. So I'm hoping we have a clean game here, because uh, Jay's a great player, and uh, I'd like to have a good game against him. But we're still going to try and win, obviously. Um, I'm hoping we can snag a W here in this matchup, but... With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the team builder. Um, I do like to do quick little team builders just so you can see what we're bringing and why we're bringing it. They have that background knowledge going into the match. Uh, if you want to skip ahead to the battle, there will be a timestamp in the description as well as earlier in the video uh, on screen letting you know when that starts. So you go ahead and do that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Our team is at the top of the screen and is as follows. It is Weavile, Kamo'o with Z-Moves, Empoleon, Florgis, Hyloswine, Rotom Fan, Neolego, Shaman, Slowbro, Pyroar, and Mega Alakazam. While Jason's team is Jirachi with Zemu, Superior, Vaporeon, Dawnfan, Vikavolt, Girder, Clefable, Porygon Z, Zatu, Skuntank, and Mega Charizard X. Now, biggest threats to me, I think a Calm Mind Jirachi is so difficult for me to deal with. I think Flash Cannon, Thunderbolt, Calm Mind Wish is very, very difficult for me to deal with. Now, will he bring that? I don't know, because he also, you know, might want to lean Assault Vest or Wish Protect or Choice Scarf as a, you know, a better Alakazam check, because his team does not appreciate Megazam. We'll get into that. Obviously, you see Megazam is going to be our first member on our team right here. Um, so I could see him going something other than that, but if he is Calm Mind, I have a lot of trouble dealing with it. So there's something we have to keep in mind. Um, Superior, also very, 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 very scary for us to deal with. Leaf Storm plus uh, Dragon Pulse, pretty much it's our whole team. Very hard. Um, and it's very difficult for us to deal with. Um, I think like a sub glare leaf storm dragon ball set is very, very difficult for us to try and uh, try and beat here. So that's obviously something else we're going to have to keep in mind is to hopefully not let that thing sub up um, and not let it glare a whole team down uh, so so consistently, which is obviously scary. Um, Vikavolt, Vikavolt's actually pretty scary in the sense that I don't really switch into its stabs very well, so something else we have to keep in mind. Um, and then Porygon Z, Porygon Z can get out of hand too because uh, my Neo Lego has a lot of pressure on this game to check a lot of things if he brings what I'm anticipating. So uh, Porygon can get a little bit overwhelming in the end game, especially with access to Hidden Power in this uh, gen. So Hidden Power Ground is definitely an option for him to go for and catch me with. And then um, Skuntank should come because it's uh, probably one of his better jam checks as well. Um, and then Mega Charizard X is Mega Charizard X. I'm expecting like a fat DD Roost set or a fat Swords Dance Roost set um, that can really rip through my team defensively if I do give it that opportunity uh, with like, you know, either, either just stabs or maybe like a Thunder Punch in there or something like that for the bro. And definitely be very scary. We have to, you know, build accordingly. But yeah, with that being said, let's jump into our first mon, which is going to be Mega Alakazam rocking out with the Alakazite, obviously. Uh, traces its ability, Psychic, Hidden Power, Ground, Recover, and Barrier. Um, EVs wise, we got 20 HP, 228 uh, defense, 164, 168 special attack, and 92 speed with a bold nature. Um, this set is a phenomenal win con. He does not deal with this Pokemon very well at all. Again, if he's a physical Rachi because he's scared of like a Calm Mind Zam, um, this is going to be a really tough for him, Mon for him to beat in the end game without Thunder Wave or Glare or anything like that on uh, on his team. Uh, if he doesn't find the opportunity to status it, this Pokemon can kind of just win on its own. Um, EVs wise, we're invested to not be too killed by uninvested punishment at plus two uh, when we get up to plus two defense. Now punishment, if you don't know, it's a cut move in generation eight as is barrier. It's a cut move that does more damage based on the more boost you have. But the weird way that the calcs end up kind of working out um, is that when I get up to plus two with this investment, it doesn't actually do it kill me though it, it would otherwise. It's very, it's very weird, but who knows? Um, we have, Enough speed. Oh my gosh, what do we have enough speed for? I think it's just Serp. I think it's just uh, Timid Serp because I can see Jason just going max just to catch me being aggressive and getting a free glare off. And then we're not too it KO'd as well by, um, what do you call it? Max Special Attack, Jirachi Flash Cannon, if it's not Calm Mind or something like that. But yeah, this set goes absolutely crazy. Psychic plus Hidden gro Power Ground rips through Jason's team. Um, Skunting, if it's not AV, takes, uh, he does get to a KO by Hidden Power Ground. 
And if it's not, it gets three hit KO'd pretty easily. And uh, I'm going with Hidden Power Ground over Shadow Ball because Shadow Ball doesn't really touch the Skun Tank uh, and Hidden Power Ground, you know, can still chip the Jirachi. If it's Wish, I don't really beat it anyways with Zam. So uh, I'd rather, you know, just chip the thing down with HP Ground or lure it in with Weavile, try and potentially trap it. Um, you know, a bunch of different options like that. So I think that's definitely, uh, you know, super, super important in that sense. And uh, yeah, can, this set can absolutely rip through. Now I am walled by Zatsu, but I don't think Zatsu comes. I think Zatsu is a really bad matchup versus me, uh, but I could be wrong, who knows? <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be Zam this week. Very, very solid win con in its own right. Next up, we got Neolego rocking out with the Assault Vest Beast Boost as its ability. Power Gem Sludge with Grass Knot Foul Play. EV's wise, we got 84 HP, 188 Special Attack, 236 Speed, the Timid Nature. EV's wise, we have Speed for Base 100s. We Oko Max HP Superior after Stealth Rock. Um, and then we have the rest of our EVs in HP. This is going to be our main Porygon Z check. It's our main Porygon Z check. It's probably our main superior pivot as well because we actually just take nothing from Leaf Storm because of our Assault Vest and our Fast, but that's that naturally. Um, and it's actually a pretty solid uh, Vikavolt check as well if that thing ends up coming and, you know, end up being a nuisance. But this Pokemon, not only is it good in pivoting into, you know, those especially offensive threats that kind of rip our team otherwise, um, it also forces in that Jirachi, and if we can catch a thing with a foul play, that is absolutely amazing for Alakazam. You're going to see the theme of this team is kind of luring the things that Zam doesn't like, and, and the things that Flora just, which you'll see in a little bit, doesn't like, uh, and punishing them accordingly, which is, uh, you know, obviously awesome. Uh, Grass Knot is for Dawn Fan in case Dawn Fan wants to come as the check, um, but other than Dawn Fan and Jirachi, our dual stabs absolutely rip through. Jason's team. Uh, so this Pokemon's very, very tough for him to deal with in the sense that he has good checks, but those checks are very pressured by other things as well and pressured to check a million other things. So uh, good to know. Next up, we got Weavile rocking out with a choice band pressure as its ability to knock off Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, and Pursuit. Even twice, we got 92 HP, max attack, and then 164 speed with the Jolly Nature. This Pokemon is very, very good at breaking through Jason's team. He does not appreciate the stabs of Dark plus Ice at all we two it ko things like clef very easily uh we can pursue trap a non-scarf rachi or a non culverberry rachi which is again amazing for our zam again that's again just kind of the theme of the team um it gives us something to revenge superior that's not behind a sub it gives us ice oh, ice shard priority uh for you know some potential yeah you know threats that get out of hand uh that end up getting fast on us like maybe we can charge our decks or a weakened agility to Porygon or a Scarfed Porygon or something like that, which is obviously really nice. And uh, yeah, we can kind of just click knock off Ice Crash in Pursuit pretty freely this whole game and really rip through. And we are putting out a couple 50-50s, a couple mind games if the um, Clefable plus Vive Porygon ends up coming. But I think we can take advantage of those uh, potential scenarios as well, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, if this thing can cra trap Jirachi, that's best case scenario. Next up, we got our slow bro rocking out the Rocky Helmet Regenerator as its ability. Scald, Toxic, Slack Off, and Foul Play. Eevee's always got max HP, max defense, and force for death with a bold nature. Uh, we are Fizz Death, and we are here to check Charizard. That's it. Um, the reason we have Foul Play is because Fat Zard can actually kind of set up all over slow bro, and I don't want to rely on Toxic to try and beat that thing if it ends up being like sub or something like that. Like sub, roost, dragon dance, mono attack move, or something like that. Like a fire punch or something weird. Uh, I think we still would beat that set 1v1, but regardless, I think foul play is just nice to have overall. It also hits a, you know, physically offensive Jirachi pretty darn hard, which is really, really nice. And um, yeah, we can kind of just throw free Scalds and Toxics throughout this whole team, be a general nuisance. Um, and again, it really chips down that Rachi if it wants to click U-turn or Iron Head or anything like that, any physical move, uh, we will be able to deal with very, very well. Again, if Calm Mind comes, oof, that's scary. But um, I, I do expect a more physical variant in case he's scared that Calm Mind Sam comes. Next up, we have our Florges. Very interesting set. We're rocking out with the leftovers. I think we're like Symbiosis or whatever uses ability it gets. Uh, Moonblast, Aromatherapy, Synthesis, and Calm Mind. EV so has to get 236 HP, 156 Defense, 20 Special Attack, Force for Death, and 92 Speed with a bold nature. EV's wise, we live a Flare Blitz after rocks from the Charizard X. We have enough speed for no speed Skun Tank, plus a little bit. We have the rest in our special attack afterwards, which is just 20 left over EVs pretty much. And then like the four for Spadef, because it won't let you go 24. Uh, I know this is very interesting, but if we can eliminate that Jirachi, I think Calm Mind Floor just absolutely rips through Jason. Again, there is a whole ass Jirachi there, but the Jirachi is very pressured to take hits from Zam, to take hits from this, to take hits from the um, Nihilego, and also uh, is liable to get Pursuit Trap potentially if it's not Scarfed or um, Culper. 
So that's obviously really nice. And if it's, you know, like Scarf or something like that, it's coming in, it's taking a bunch of hit every time. And I think that my floor just can find an opportunity to win as soon as that thing goes down. We can kind of call mind up and just start clicking Moonblast. And uh, he really doesn't appreciate it. Outside of Rachi, he has no fair resist. So uh, that's obviously absolutely amazing. And again, it's a little interesting, but it, you know, it ends up working. And it also gives me a cleric. And I thought having a cleric is very important on this team in the sense that um, Shapira might be glaring me, Rashi might be thunder waving me, Clef might be thunder waving me, you know, a bunch of things like that. The, the Zard might be thrown off uh, Willowis or Toxics and stuff like that. Same thing with the Skun Tank uh, and the Vaporeon. So I feel like there might be a lot of status coming my way. So while Aroma Therapy is not only nice for Florges and its attempt to set up on some things, um, it's also very nice for the team as a whole and keeping them healthy and things like that and keeping them not paralyzed. So that's obviously very, very important and nice. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be Florges. Probably a good secondary win con if we do end up eliminating the Rachi. Then lastly, we have our Kamo'o rocking out with Poisonium Z bulletproof as its ability, I believe. No, soundproof, soundproof as its ability. Um, we're rocking out with close combat, poison jabs, stealth rock, and dragon dance. Eevee says he got 116 HP, 236 attack, and 156 speed with an adamant nature. Eevee says we live a plus two dragon pulse after stealth rock from the superior. We're creeping, um, we're creeping, oh my gosh, what did I say? Skun tank creeping, um, Empoleon, and then we have the rest in our attack. This Pokemon is not only a very good rocker, it's a very good Vika Volt check, which is obviously very nice. Uh, we soft check the Superior as well, and with a big Poison Jab, um, we can, you know, pop a, bit, a really big Z Poison off on the Clef. We do, I think it's like 77 to 91 to max Fist Def Clef just at neutral. So if we can sit that thing down a little bit, it will be in range of Poison Jab. No, I do expect Jason to scout for it, so there might be a little bit of mind games in that sense. Um, but yeah, this Pokemon can also kind of just win on its own too, despite us being, you know, this being a rocker and being more defensively oriented and switching into a lot of different, uh, you know, pivoting into a lot of different things, I suppose. Um, CC plus close combat in the end game is uh, actually pretty hard for Jason to deal with once his team gets a little bit chipped down. So um, definitely very solid. We do have to scout and see if that Clefable is unaware or Magic Guard. If it's Magic Guard, we can Dragon Ants and like kind of freely throw off a Z Poison. Um, pretty darn easily if we don't expect him to scout for it. Again, just mind games there, but yeah, very solid mod overall. It's it's really important as a rocker, though. Rocks are very important in this game because there's a lot of momentum. There's a Charizard X, and um, it's just great for chipping down uh, his team overall. We have to be careful if the Zatu comes so it doesn't bounce it back, but obviously very solid there at the, uh, at the end of the day. But yeah, that's going to be your team for week six of PMU. I will be right back with the battle. Alrighty guys, here we are with the battle. You can see the six that Jay elected to bring. He went with the Jirachi, Skuntank, Vikavolt, Clefable, Mega Charizard X, and Porygon Z. Now, big switch off the bat, like I said in the team builder, I am definitely absolutely terrified of a uh, of a Calm Mind Wish, uh, you know, two attacks Jirachi, Flash Cannon, Thunderbolt, kind of just rips through my team, so I gotta be very careful. Um, Skuntank was definitely pretty expected. It's the best. It's a really good Zam pivot, especially if he's a more of a win con Rachi kind of thing. Um, Vikable, definitely interesting, but looking at my team now, I don't particularly pivot in super well to it, so it definitely makes a little bit of sense. Clefable, felt like it was necessary. Checks things like Weavile, Komo'o, um, can chew a hit from Zam, uh, and is just generally an annoying nuisance. Calm Mind can actually get pretty out of hand pretty fast, so we gotta be careful. Mega Charizard X, I'm expecting some kind of Swords Dancer set, some kind of set to take advantage of a more passive Slow Bro set. And then Porygon Z in the end game, man, is terrifying, whether it be Scarf or Agility, or anything like that. Scarf or Agility are the main two that I'm really worried about, as it can really kind of just, uh, you know, go crazy once our Nihi takes, uh, you know, a little bit of chips. So we kind of have to use our Komo'o more so to pivot into that Vikavolt than our Nihi, because we see the Porygon Z here, um, if that makes any sense. But yeah, we can go and leave, uh, jump into it. Um, I'm going to lead my Kamoa. I just feel as if it's a very important lead. I think rocks are really important in scouting whether or not that Clefable is going to be unaware or magic card. Um, it's going to be really, really good information. And uh, Jason doesn't really pivot into this Pokemon really, really well. I think fighting plus poison coverage is very annoying and difficult for him to deal with overall. And getting up rocks against a team that likely doesn't have any defog unless it's defog skun tank uh, for his Zard. Uh, is amazing. So getting up those rocks before it comes in would be absolutely phenomenal. So Jay's going to lead off with the Jirachi. I don't think he's going to have poison coverage in this. I mean, uh, fairy coverage in this matchup at all. I don't think he can really ever fit that. So I'm just going to like to stay and get up my rocks and um, kind of pivot out as this Clefable comes hard. And now we won't be able to figure out what its ability is yet. But, you know, the rocks being up now, it gives us that uh, that opportunity to do so. So I'm going to switch out into my floor just as Jason elects to go for the Stealth Rock, getting up his own, showing that he's definitely not choosing to defog these away at this point, which is definitely... Um, uh, understandable being that he doesn't really have great defoggers at this point as I'm gonna make a double out into my slow row actually expecting the Jirachi to pivot in but uh, Jason's gonna make a pretty safe switch out into his um, 
Mega Charizard as well to try and get his Mega off, knowing that he resists that Moonblast at first at least and is in a pretty good spot. But you know, this double by me covers either one of those. It's just, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretending like I expected the Zard. Um, this was my Zard switch in, but I was expecting the Drachi to come in. So Jay's gonna stay in. He's gonna elect to roost up this turn, expecting him to probably roost because he doesn't really have the liberty of switching out at this point if he, uh, you know, ends up having the roost. I'm gonna Toxic here. I don't think he's gonna be sub, and I don't think even if he is sub, that he clicks it on that turn, being that he needs to get healthy. Uh, he's not, uh, you know, in a very good spot at this point. So I'm gonna be able to get this Toxic off, really neuter this Charizard, and make it to where Rocks plus Poison is always gonna make it to where I don't ever just like outright lose to this Pokemon, which is obviously nice. And Toxic cover other switches as well. So Jay's gonna go for a Toxic of his own right here, which is definitely completely fair, showing that he is gonna be, you know, a Zard that tries to lure in our Slowbro and poison us. And poisoning us makes a physical Jirachi a lot scarier uh, to potentially deal with, though we do have Aromatherapy in the back. So provided we do just find that opportunity to get off the aromatherapy, we honestly aren't in that bad of a spot, um, to be completely honest, just to kind of get this back off, uh, get this uh, poison off of our slow run, stuff like that. So Jay's gonna make the, uh, the decision to pivot out here um, as I get a rocks. Unfortunately, I'm gonna foul play here. Wasn't a really great play by me. Um, Skull was pretty no drawback. His Pokemon was poisoned. Uh, and he doesn't have great squall switchings because if I can burn the skun tank, it's even less of a threat to my Zam in the back to where some, at some point I may not even have to risk the, you know, barrier mind games and things like that. But I'm going to pivot out here. I know I'll chew a pursuit even if he ends up going for it. It's my best play just to go into my Komo'o, put on a little bit of offensive pressure as he does end up going for the Dark Pulse, which is, uh, again, pretty fair. As uh, he's going to make the switch out here and I'm going to DD. Now, I don't think that DD was my best play here either. Well, mind you, I think my best play was just raw close combating because close combat should always put this thing in range of a uh, of a neutral Z move anyways. And as we're going to see, this thing comes out and it turns to be unaware. And it being unaware is very unfortunate because we don't actually knock this thing out with a Z move from this range of health. It looks like it's around 95-ish percent, um, whatever leftovers plus, you know, 88% is. Uh, and I believe our Z move did a max of 91% to this thing. So unfortunately, I couldn't really stay in and risk it as Jay is going to go for a Moonblast, but this does give me my free floor just at the very least um, to get off that uh, aromatherapy. So I'm in a little bit better of a spot uh, with my slow road checking that uh, Jirachi that showed to have at least U-turn. And if I can, you know, punish that thing on U-turns, that's amazing in its own right. Um, but it's showing U-turn also kind of tips me off that it may in fact be Scarf with the, you know, like Wish Fable and, you know, Scun Tank to also check Zam. But we are going to be able to aromatherapy right here, get away that heal bell off of our slow bro, which is, I mean, that poison away from our slow bro, which makes us a much easier pivot into this thing now, because now it's not shaping us with U-turn plus toxic, or it's not flinching us down with iron head plus toxic or something like that, where we can still have this thing for other physical threats in the back. Uh, but again, it's mainly here to check this thing, especially because the Zard did end up getting so chipped. As I am going to go hard slow bro, again, not too worried about the U-turn now that the poison is gone. It's still going to chunk, but we're going to be able to force Rocky Helmet damage on this thing. And that plus Rocks is slowly, slowly, slowly going to chip it down in Razam range. Um, unfortunately, out comes the Bike Volt here. And uh, this is where I'm kind of realizing, damn, I don't have great pivots into Bike Volt at all. We do force to take Rocks there, which is obviously great. We don't have to worry about Sticky Web this generation. It does not get Sticky Web until Generation 8. So it's not something we really have to worry about at this point. We just more so have to worry about this thing clicking a button versus us and uh, you know putting us in a pretty disadvantageous spot. As Jason is going to click Volt Switch again. Very free. I don't think I I have a ground type on this roster that brought to the this week or this team that I brought this week and I don't have great pivots into the move at all so that was more comfortable with my Kamo taking damage and pivoting into it and dealing with it that way and stuff like that but does this give a free switch into the Clefable again it is not at range at this point um if it took just like one more turn of rocks where was that right now it would potentially be in range of a neutral z poison but not really a risk I'm willing to take I'm gonna go hard Clefable this time uh Pretty, pretty darn risky, potentially, depending if he ends up going for like a Psy Shock because, you know, it hits me neutrally at the very least. But Jay's actually going to make a double into his Porygon Z, probably expecting my, uh, my floor just like I did last time. I'm going to stay in and go for a foul play because in my head, hold on, I need to pause it. So let me, let me explain this play a little bit. I make the double and this is this is my Neo Lego. My Neo Lego is my Porygon Z check. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, this Pokemon rips me. There's no way he wants to let me, uh, you know, let it stay in and take a bunch of unnecessary damage for no reason. You might as well save this thing in the back to be a potential win con. Uh, not really thinking of the fact that it could be hidden power ground and it lived anyone hit from me, which is definitely unfortunate. I try to get a little bit over aggressive then and click foul play and catch it. 
that I catch that Rachi, because if I catch that Rachi with foul play, it was essentially a useless Pokemon between rocks and my slow bro at that point. But Jay's gonna stay in as I overplay, go for hidden power ground. Thankfully, because we're AV, we do live. He just find out that we're AV. And uh, in my head, I'm thinking, not gonna lie to you, in my head, I'm thinking there is no way in hell that Jason sees me play foul play expecting his Rachi, and then the next turn goes hard Rachi. There's no way. There's absolutely no way he makes this play. He made the play. He went hard Rachi as this time I clicked Sludge Wave. Maybe Power Jump was playing. Maybe just double foul playing was the play, but unfortunately, he reads this like a book. I'm going to pivot out and he's got for Scarf. And even if it's not Scarf, I don't kill this thing with a foul play from here. Even if it's max attack. Just don't kill it at this point. So again, I'm going to make the hard slower play. <sighs> Jason is going to go ahead and iron head me and again. This is absolutely phenomenal because he just takes a bunch of chip for no reason. He's getting to around 50%, which means if he's not split deaf soon, he is going to be in range. As right here, I am just going to go for a skull. Again, it's drawback free. I'm not going to make the mistake of going for foul play again. Uh, I'm going to throw off a skull. If I could burn this gun tank, I am absolutely chilling. Unfortunately, I do not get this burn, but again, I'm fine with just kind of going into my Kamo and in, uh, trying to get off another hit with it. That or sacking it off to a predicted play rough, which you're going to see Jason actually does make a very good play and he goes to the player expecting me to pivot out. Completely fair, but again, Kamo wasn't needed for me at this point. Um, being that I got the Vikeville to switch in ones on rocks, it's pretty much a range of a lot of my team at this point. As long as I keep around my Weavile or I keep around my Zam or I keep around my Niki, I should be able to revenge that thing and kill it. So not too worried there. I'm going to go Weavile right here. I'm going to claim a kill with Icicle Crash. He can't really go Weavile. I mean, uh, Jirachi being his ice resist on this roster because it uh, it gets hit really, really hard, especially in conjunction with just being uh, Rocky Helmet fodder. And Jay's going to make the mistake going hard into his Clefable, assuming he can take two, but he does not know we are choice banned Weavile, and that is going to be a 2 hit KO. Even if he gets like a double protect here, uh, we should be able to always 2 hit KO this Clefable with Ice Crash, but uh, thankfully he doesn't go for protect. I don't know if he was wish protect or if he was just, you know, didn't have protect or if he just realized there was no point. Uh, but he is going to let us go ahead and pick off this. <sighs> this Clefable. Um, with ice crashes now the rock is going to come in but again i'm completely fine with that i can always 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 just go my slow roam and if he u-turns again yes you gain momentum on me but i'm getting the chip that i need which is the most important thing at this point so u-turns going to come out again does a decent chunk with, in conjunction with rocks it does you know a good 40 percent total damage uh, when you count in the rocks damage but now this thing's at like a good 30 percent it's in range of pretty much everything on my team after its next rock switch and we're forcing this porygon and being that it's life orb it's at 50 percent already all six the rocks and it's gonna have to take a hit here next time and right here, I am just going to essentially stack off my Neo Lego. It covered a nasty pot play. It covered really anything but an agility. Uh, and if he agility, I can go into my floor just the turn afterwards and always live a hit and boom blast it afterwards. So be in, you know, again, be in a pretty good spot as more 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 life orb chip is going to come off this is going to be my opportunity that i'm going to get to throw off a very free psychic with my Zam. Now, I think this is a very free psychic in the sense that it kills both the Jirachi and the skunk tank potentially chill in the back. So if he makes that really aggro play, kudos on him, but I don't think it's in his best interest. It's right here, I am gonna Mega Evolve. Jason elects to sack off his Mega Charizard X, which again, makes a lot of sense at this point. It doesn't really offer much at sub 25% in poisoned. It doesn't roost on anything. It doesn't really do anything besides maybe throw off one more really strong Flare Blitz. Uh, speaking of Tough Claws Flare Blitz, we trace the Tusk Claws from the Charizard, become the strongest physical attacking Alakazam in all of the land. Uh, and pick it off with our Psychic as it goes down. So Zam gets a kill here, is able to put itself in a good position. Now out comes Skuntank, and this, you know, kind of leads to some mind games. And there was a couple different plays that, you know, could potentially happen here. We see, uh, we saw Dark Pulse earlier, which is obviously something that will hurt. It will not kill us, and we do kill this thing from this range with either a Focus Blast or a Hidden Power Ground. That's something that Jason has to keep in mind. Um, he could potentially pursue me on my switch out and just kill me for sure. Um, he can just crunch me. If he ends up having crunch, he can sucker punch me, expecting me to attack. So I figured my best play in this specific instance, um, what covered the most basis for me was going to be clicking barrier because it covered any physical attacks they went for. And if he went for a dark pulse, I actually lived a dark pulse into a sucker punch from a mixed skunk tank from this range. Once I got the plus two defense and I could be in a pretty good spot at the very least and, you know, see what I can do. I can even potentially try and recover, you know, get some shenanigans off as we are going to barrier up and you're going to see Jason's actually going to elect to go for a poison jab. And this poison jab absolutely bounces. It does what 20 something points of damage. Um, not a lot. We're gonna be able to hidden power ground here next. As uh, thankfully, 
Hidden Soccer Punch, which means we should, in theory, be able to clean up this game. Uh, this Vikavolt is in range of Psychic, the Jirachi is in range of Hidden Power Ground, and the um, Porygon is also in range of Psychic. So we are going to click Psychic on this Vikavolt, be able to pick it off right there from 55-ish, 60%, which was awesome. Like I said, as long as I had something faster to revenge it, it wasn't that big of a deal. And now comes Jirachi. Now, provided we just don't get flinched once, we're chilling. Uh, this Iron Head is doing about 20% to us when we are at plus two defense. So realistically, he needs a lot of flinches or a crit into a flinch. This is unfortunate because it kind of just makes our endgame a little bit weirder. Uh, Jason's going to make a really, uh, really nice double expecting our slower to come in. He's going to double into his Porygon Z. But again, unless he's recover, there really isn't a lot of instances in which he can really win with this Pokemon at this point, as I'm going to make the pivot out into my slow bro, expecting him to obviously just like Iron Head again, potentially pick me off. But again, good double by Jason. Um, knowing that that was going to be my play. I do live one more rock switch with my Zam, which is another thing to keep in mind. But I'm just going to make the play into my floor. Just reason I make my play into my floor just is because I live one try attack. Um, but it doesn't matter if the, the, you know, the try attack comes out. My main concern is this thing um, trying to double dance. If it agilities, that's fine. I live hit, I kill it with Moonblast. If it nasty plots, it's fine. It can agility afterwards where I live or I just kill it with Moonblast. Um, it never gets an opportunity to get up to with me going hard into Florges, um, opposed to having to sack my slow row, which could potentially lose me in the game. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna make the pivot out right here into my Weavile. I'm just gonna click Ice Shard. I got no reason not to. I can pick this thing off pretty darn easily um, and, you know, put it down. And obviously, the, uh, what do you call it, doesn't wanna come in either, the Jirachi at this point. So down goes the Oregon. Uh, maybe I should probably should just click Knock Off, which is like the safe player in me clicking Ice Shard, uh, thinking I'd probably potentially 2 kill the Rossi on the switch in anyways, um, and I still have my slow row in the back, so again, not too big of a deal, as I am just going to be able to go into my slow row, as Jason's going to uh, just U-turn on out of this battle, um, kind of dying to Rocky Helmet. If it's not this turn, it's the next turn. We'll see. It is the next turn, so we are going to be able to pick up a nice 3-0 dub against Jason this week in his new Britain Rock Ruff. Definitely a really fun game. Uh, unfortunately, that Zam couldn't get the sweep because of the little bit of hacks there, and I need to kind of save my differential. Uh, because we've taken a couple tough losses this season, but um, still definitely nice to finally get Zam to work at the very least and, uh, you know, be able to grab this nice 3-0 dub. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like. Um, let me know what you guys thought of the game. Let me know what you guys thought of the team we brought, the team Jason brought. I love interacting with you guys in the comments, and, you know, it helps me push me in the algorithm. We're pushing towards 500 subs here by... Uh, the end of March would be awesome. It was my original goal for February, but unfortunately didn't hit it. But again, we're grinding. We're slowly getting there. And I appreciate each and every one of you that's watching my videos and, you know, supporting me, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. Join the Discord if you haven't done so already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.